Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Sunday, August the 26, 2018. Bettingangle.us, gamblersadvisory.com, both free sites. Let's talk about the new lightweight champion. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's a whole group of fights that fascinate me that I can't really discuss here online, in part because the casinos have figured out the play and they've drained the swamp of value, right? In other words, you see an underdog, you say, wow, this underdog is a great challenger for the title. And unfortunately, the people setting odds at the casino know it well. So here you had Ray Beltran, the lightweight champion had not lost since 2014, and that loss was to Terence Crawford. Right, this is a guy who used to be Manny Pacquiao's sparring partner. So he's been in the ring with great fighters, right? Pacquiao, Crawford. He um, took the long way to the lightweight title. There he was at 37 years of age. He's fighting at home. Right, he's in his backyard. He's fighting in Glendale, Arizona against a former 130-pound champion who got knocked out by Gervonta Davis, who has gained weight and is now fighting at 135. You would have thought that you would have gotten at least a plus 150 on Jose Pedraza. Right? The idea is, look, Beltran, who is active, right? Beltran will come find you in the ring. Beltran, who has stamina. His two previous fights went the distance. You would have thought that just Beltran's level of activity, the fact that he's the reigning champ, the fact that he has more experience at 135, the fact that he's fighting at home, you would have thought that that would have made him a meaningful favorite. It didn't. In the sports books, the line was close. Pedraza was a slight underdog, and I mean slight. In fact, there were times before the fight went off where Pedraza was actually the favorite. Right? A lot of risk involved. Well, let's just say, Pedraza put on a show from this seat. My favorite round, we all have favorites, was a round Pedraza takes off, right? Takes off the round. But the skill level was such that it deserved a wow, right? Pedraza, in taking off a round against a front foot heavy champion, right, who's coming at him, decides, especially after the Gavante Davis fight, it's significant, decides not to go backward, right? He decides not to move away. This is preparation, folks. He decides not to move away from Ray Beltran. Because if he moves away from Beltran, he would look like he's running. Right, like Beltran, who's coming forward anyway, is chasing him down. So what does Pedraza do? He decides to take the round off from deep inside the pocket. Right, so instead of moving backwards, what Pedraza does is he collapses the pocket. <clears throat> he just leans his body up. I'm not kidding. The film of the fight is worth it just for this round. He decides to lean his body up against Ray Beltrans. So here is Ray, a front foot heavy fighter, but the secret to Ray, well, one of them anyway, is that Ray wants a little bit of distance. Ray's really more mid-range than short range. And of course, the revelation was that at short range. The better fighter between these two was Jose Pedraza, the boxer. 
right? It's a breathtaking round, folks. It's three minutes of Pedraza just standing right in front of Ray. I'm talking about Ray is as close to me as my kid's Play-Doh, right? Ray is right here. And Pedraza just leans on him, covers up. Right? Ray can't hit him with shots because Ray needs space for shots. As Ray moves back to create the space, Pedraza moves forward with him. It would be like a fighter fighting Sean Porter and deciding during a round that he's going to smother Sean Porter. So rather than Porter being outside, then jumping inside and getting up close, rather than a fighter holding Porter, like Cal Brook does. Instead, the fighter has Sean Porter jump inside and then just stays there with him. Right? It's high level stuff. It's noteworthy because Pedraza goes backward against Gervonta Davis and ends up in Davis's wheelhouse. So, post that fight, this is why experience matters. Pedraza instead knows not to go back on Ray Beltran, right? Let me also say, too, the fight is striking because Beltran is your tough guy, right? He wants to mix it up with you. He wants action. Andre Ward is one of the commentators on the fight, and Ward just flatly says, look, Beltran's a vet. He's prepared after six rounds to lose three of the six rounds. Right? He just wants to hit you in the stomach a few times, bank some rounds to get the later dividends. Right? Well, let me just say the problem he has, and it's different levels of skill. The problem he has is while he comes in, and trust me, aggression is not a hole in Ray Beltran's game. Right? While he comes in prepared to mix it up. The guy he's fighting is three-dimensional. In other words, Beltran's fighting at this plane. Pedraza's bending his knees. Folks, I hope you look at the film. This is spectacular balance. Pedraza is bending his knees and at times is just dropping down. This is shades of Pernell Whitaker, right? And if you're of a certain age, that's holy grail type stuff, right? Pedraza's just three-dimensional. He can fight tall, he can fight small, right? Pedraza <clears throat> bends his knees. His body's still parallel to Beltran's, but Beltran can't figure out how to deal with the new angles Pedraza keeps Creating. Understand, too, Pedraza, fluid, ambidextrous, right? So Pedraza starts to fight out right-handed, decides, you know what, let me switch to southpaw. Then he starts landing some great jabs, right? So let me just say this. Let's pursue a storyline here, and it's important because Pedraza's next fight might be against Lomachenko, right? Understand, Pedraza now owns a share of the lightweight title. After the fight, he referred to some holy grail names. He said he wants to unify. He said he wants to fight <laughs> Lomachenko. He also mentioned Mikey Garcia, right? This is a guy who, you know, has been a champion. Now he's pursuing greatness. Look at the ages, right? He's 29. Understand, that was another untold story in this fight. Beltran's 37. There was an eight-year age gap. I know Beltran now was the champion, at least going into the fight. But understand, Father Time had caught up to him a little bit. As I said, his last two fights went the distance. Beltran's a guy who wins by KO. Beltran started to have injuries. If you track the injuries, right, his power hand got injured. He blamed it for the last two fights going the distance. In other words, 
This was a multi-fight injury. I'm just telling you that's how aging catches up with you. That trick elbow is a trick elbow in fight after fight. Right, George Groves right now, the world is going to look at his fight that's coming up, right, against Callum Smith. Because that shoulder, the question is, was that a one-time thing? Or is that shoulder going to pop out at inopportune times against elite competition? Well, understand, Beltran has one of those chronic problems, right? His hand is a problem. He can't load up on it once it's hurt. So, all I'm saying is the casino knew all of this. They knew all of this. All you have to do is watch Pedraza fight. I'm still surprised he lost to Gravante Davis. Right? I think I made a pre-fight video that's still here online. Right? The casino knew who this guy was. They knew that the reigning lightweight champion fighting at home who hadn't lost for four years was going to have a hard time with Pedraza, who wasn't even his original opponent. Understand, Pedraza was a replacement opponent. Right? Just like, by the way, for those who like history, Vitaly Klitschko was a replacement opponent when he fought Lennox Lewis. Right? Let me say, too, some pundits want you to believe, and on the telecast, I was surprised by this. I was watching the fight. It looked to me like Pedraza was dominating the fight. And the people announcing the fight wanted you to believe that the fight was close. In fact, after 10 rounds on the telecast, the guys doing the fight all had the fight even. The fight wasn't even, folks. I know the folklore is that the late knockdown gives the fight to Pedraza. How's that possible when two of the judges have Pedraza winning 117-110? This isn't a late knockdown gives one guy the edge. Let's take away. Let's take away the knockdown round. Let's ignore it altogether. Let's take away two points off the margin from Pedraza, right? Just understand Pedraza still on two of the three cards wins the fight by five rounds. Five rounds. Understand on the close card, the 115-112 card, you take away the round with the knockdown. Pedraza still wins the fight. I thought Pedraza won the fight convincingly. What I want people to do is to look at this fight and compare the styles to a possible Errol Spence, Mikey Garcia fight. Understand, Spence is the bigger guy like Beltran, right? I know Pedraza's 5'8 and a half, but Pedraza's a slender 5'8 and a half, right? With a history at 130. Right? This fight, lightweight's 135. Right? Errol Spence is physically bigger than Mikey Garcia. In the ring, he's more aggressive than Mikey Garcia. Just like Ray Beltran is more aggressive than Pedraza. Right? But there's a skill gap. Right? Just like there was in this fight. Pedraza throws the better jabs, right? Pedraza, better defense. In other words, Pedraza's not willing to trade, right? Pedraza doesn't want to get hit. <laughs> he wants to hit you and pivot. One of the best things with the knockdown, and it's a left hook, is you'll notice on film that as Pedraza throws the left hook, this is the knockdown punch, He's actually moving away. You, you see him turn his head and move away because defensive fighters are always thinking about what might come back. Pedraza, and he did get KO'd. 
by Gravante Davis. But Pedraza is defensively blessed. I'm just telling you, if Mikey Garcia, who got hit with shots in fights, right? The Kell Brook fight, he gets hit with shots. His last fight, the guy he KO'd in the first round, look at that guy's body punches. What he lands on Errol Spence. I'm just telling you that you would notice, just like you noticed in this fight, that Ray Beltran didn't have the defense of his opponent, didn't have the skill level, that sometimes Beltran would jump in the pocket. And then you'd come to find out that that's exactly where Pedraza wanted him to be. In fact, Pedraza <laughs> wants Beltran in the pocket so Pedraza can rest at times. That's how advanced Pedraza is. Mikey Garcia, it's the same thing. I concede Pedraza against Mikey Garcia would be a great fight at 135. But as a selfish boxing fan, I'd rather see Mikey against Errol Spence because Errol Spence right now has a bigger name and I'm hoping the casino misprices that fight. Right? But understand what you're up against. Casinos are savvy. In this fight, fought in Beltran's backyard, right, his backyard, Pedraza went off at very close odds, right? Was the favorite at times before the fight. Let me say this too. <clears throat> As you look at Pedraza, what I want people to do, and I know on the telecast, they were saying, oh, Beltran has an opportunity at uppercuts, right? I thought the announcers did a disservice to Pedraza here. Right? Beltran does land some uppercuts on Pedraza. But what I want you to do is to look at how Pedraza sets up his uppercuts. Look at how he uses his body. It's really masterful stuff. In other words, he has a shoulder here. And he makes sure his body is leaning against Beltran. Then he just quickly pivots and has the uppercut ready. Right? Just understand. Beltran isn't a KO puncher. He's a stylist. He's a slick fighter. Doesn't have a lot of KOs. Power punches aren't his forte. But yet against a hyper-aggressive fighter, Pedraza decides to show you that he knows how to throw power punches. And believe it or not, he's better at it when he wants to be than Ray Beltran, right? This is like in baseball. You see a guy who's a doubles hitter, but when the guy wants to show you power, right, the guy can. Think Ashiro Suzuki, right? So, to sum up, I believe this is a fight that's a must-watch. If you can find the tape, please sit down and enjoy it. Look for the round Pedraza takes off where he decides to do it from deep in the pocket, right? Great fighter. Let me also say, too, I thought it was interesting. I know on the telecast they try to hype it. The fight's clearly, it's clearly in Beltran's backyard. So Pedraza's from Puerto Rico. Beltran's from Mexico. Understand, that's one of the great rivalries historically in boxing. Right? Think Wilfredo Gomez against Salvador Sanchez. Long line of fighters. Right? Antonio Margarito, Miguel Cotto, etc. <clears throat> well, let me just say this. If you want a good laugh, listen to the very beginning of the fight. Right? The announcer points out the Puerto Rican-Mexico rivalry. And then he... <laughs> It's clear, it's clear that about 95% of the people in the crowd are rooting for Mexico, not Puerto Rico. So the producer on the show does the best thing he can. They find the one guy in the crowd, they find the one guy in the crowd who has a Puerto Rican flag. In other words, the production teams try to make it look equal. 
right? But make no mistake, everyone's there for Beltran. So it's so ridiculous that during the fight, you start hearing chants of Mexico, Mexico. No one is rooting apart from the guy who is waving the Puerto Rican flag and members of, you know, uh, Pedraza's quarter and uh, family members who are at the fight. Apart from a small crowd, no one is rooting for Jose Pedraza. And Pedraza then proceeds, in my opinion, and I know this is not how it's broadcast, but Pedraza proceeds to throw a masterpiece. In other words, the guy, you know, isn't lulled into a shootout, right? The telecast really roughs him up because the telecast, in pointing out the strengths and weaknesses of the fighters, <laughs> they, they point out that Pedraza can be lulled into a shootout, right? I think they're thinking about the worst night of his professional career, the only night he lost, that Gervonta Davis fight, right? So they keep saying, gee, you know, is he mentally strong enough to not get lulled in a shootout? They keep asking the question. And this is while the guy is showing you the mental toughness, right? Congratulations, champ. I thought Pedraza won this fight even before the knockdown. I would encourage you to look at the scoring. You need to view this as a victory over the hometown fighter. In other words, it's even better than him winning the title. He's winning the title in the champ's backyard, right? Again, they're chanting Mexico, not Puerto Rico, right? And Pedraza trusts his skills. In other words, he decides, hey, I'm going to rest. Let me stay in the pocket and rest. Let me get deep in the pocket. Let me lean on this guy and rest. Right? This is a craftsman who has thought out things ahead of time and then has the courage to execute them in front of a crowd and a broadcast team, quite frankly, rooting for the champion. Right, So there's a new champ at 135, Jose Pedraza. Given that Lomachenko recently had surgery, let's just say that Lomachenko-Pedraza fight is going to be interesting if it comes off later this year. Pedraza is a dangerous and worthy opponent. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.